In this session, we're talking about the mindset behind the gaffer Little's activities. The, uh, so the behind the scenes, okay? So, those of you who don't know me, my name is Christine Pinto. I am a kindergarten teacher for Arcadia Unified, and I am the author of the Google Ask for Little's book, and I have recently joined forces with Innovating Play. So, I'm gonna just go like, share an activity and then share like the, what's inside my head as I'm creating activities and when I'm facilitating um, experiences for my kids. So with this one, it's creating and graphing. It's done in Google Sheets. Uh, this part right here is a, a, a Google drawing inside of a Google Sheet. Okay, so they, the kids click on the Google drawing. The, the leaves are on the left side of the tree and then they drag the leaves onto the tree. They create their picture, they come over here and, oh, snaps, it's a graph, um, and they graph the colors according to their leaves. And then over here they come and they uh, complete the sentences. This is something the kids can do in September. So when, so they can, so yes, they can log into their computers and they can do this activity in September. Let me tell you about the mindset that goes with it. So I ask myself when I'm creating activities, what choices do my kids get to make? Am I going to be collecting 26 of the same thing? Nothing drives me more nuts than having to put something up on the wall and they all look the same. They should look different. The more personality the kids get to have in their stuff, the better. But even if, the, if, even if their choice is how many of each leaf they put on their tree, that's a choice. So here's another activity. This is an Imagine Design in, in Google Sheets. This is something that my TK, my transitional kindergarten kids, they were like four and five, they inspired me to create this template because they were interested in maps coming up to me and saying like, hey, you know, I went to Disneyland. I live in California. I went to Disneyland. Here's a map of Disneyland. Or, you know, they go to another amusement park. And I was like, so how can I take something that they're interested in to explore something, to explore a tool? I told the kids, like, use your imagination. Are you going to create a video game? Are you going to create a map? Are you creating a city? You have stuff on the side. I want you to tell me why you know, I had them come up later and tell me why they placed what they placed onto their the little grid. Um, so the mindset behind this activity is, do the kids have space for exploration? Or am I just giving them something and telling them to do it? Like, so what connections can they make to it? Um, is one or more of the four C's applied in this activity? And in this one, it's, it's creativity. But also, if you ask the kids, why did you put what, where you put it, then they can explain what's going on in their head. I had a kid tell me, I put three princesses next to each other with the three castles next to each other so the princesses could be next door neighbors and they can go over each other's houses if they were bored. I wouldn't have known that had I not asked the kid that. So again, look past the activities and see the questions that go through my head. Okay. Uh, this one is, these are Google Slides. And so all that's on the slide is the green and purple boxes with like the titles. Well, some of the titles. So the idea is this particular activity is done with, with buddies. It could be with littles and bigs, or if you're like, if you have like TK kids and first grade kids, the idea is that um, the, the first time my kids met their big buddies, we did this Google Slides activity because you know, what better way to capture the experience than to take a picture, of course, to take a selfie. So the green boxes are for the kindergartners, the purple boxes for the big kids. The kids take a selfie. And like I have specific areas for the kids to work in so that they know, you know, because I told the bigs, my kids can, they know how, they know their numbers, they know some sight words, and they know how to spell their colors. Let them do some typing stuff. I gave you a space to let them do their stuff. Let the kindergartner do the green box stuff. So um, the only things I had on there were the title page, the, uh, the picture, their age, and their color. And then here, this, the, the template allows the kids to change the title. So they had like, you know, yeah, favorite emoji. Like I didn't think of that. Like some kids had like favorite movie, favorite like, and this activity can go on for as long as your time with buddies is happening. So um, this is a collaborative activity. So after we were done, the big kids shared the, the, the Google Slides with themselves so that they had access to it in their, in their drive. There's a blog post for that that has the link. And so the, you know, the mindset behind this is like, you know, this goes beyond Google. Like, does a platform offer a space for collaboration? And can I expand what's happening inside my classroom with other classrooms? Can I have a link and pass it on to parents? 
Can I have a link and toss it on a Twitter for other teachers to participate, have other kids participate? Uh, so always looking for ways to expand. So again, like I've been saying, look past the activity and look at what the mindset is so that way when you have ideas, these are things that you can keep in mind as well. This is the last activity I'm going to talk about. It's about using, um, using toys and manipulatives and technology. We don't have to ditch manipulatives with technology. We can marry the two together. Okay, so let me go back really quick. The, the activity with this one is, uh, this, this is another Google Slides. My kids, this took, this was a project. The kids did it on Chromebooks and iPads. And I tell you that because it could be done on both platforms. So all that was on the slide that I had put was like the title page and the sentence. And so I wanted my kids to make an all about me book for like the open house at the end of the year when parents come, something that's not gonna go in the trash, you know? And you know, if your kid's face is on it, good chances that it's not gonna go in the trash. So uh, I worked with them in groups, like in groups of like, you know, six. And then I had told them what the sent, we went over some of the words that we knew and I told them what the sentence was and they, their job was to make sure they took a picture with what matched the sentence. Uh, so then once they were done, I printed, I, I put two slides on a page, cut them in half and made a little book out of it and then they wrote in their responses. Because yes, technology is a thing and we have it in the classroom, but like, you know, the pencil and the paper aren't going away. The kids still need to learn how to write, especially when they're in preschool, especially when they're four and five years old. So again, my, the, the mindset behind this is that we don't have to ditch manipulatives. We can marry it with technology, okay? Uh, so the mindset with Gaffer Littles is, is to always believe in the kids. I'm gonna say this now and I'll probably say it again later. The mindset and the heart is to believe in the kids. If you take the technology part out of Gaffer Littles, the message is still there, the heart is still there to believe in the kids. Technology is only one tool that the kids have in their tool belt. So that kind of ties back to what I had just said about marrying manipulatives and toys and stuff like that with technology. Uh, so keep that in mind too. You're not just limited to Google. You're not just limited to Flipgrid. You're not just limited to just one tool. Expand your kid's tool belt.